Hey everybody, this is Kimberly with Starfish Design and Broidery Group. Um, today we're making a sewing pattern. Um, what did I do wrong here? This tab is much longer. I must have measured wrong. Um, so we're making a sewing pattern. This is the So Mini um, wallet. It's uh, really, you wouldn't know it from how long the video takes, but it's actually a really quick sew. So um, this is all cloth. I made it with um, all cloth. Um, I'm not sure what I did wrong here. My tab is longer on this one for some reason, but it has a little slot here to put your credit cards and then it locks with a snap. This one I put the lanyard or the D-ring strap connector so you could wear it like a lanyard. This one I put it up here with a wristlet strap. Um, then inside it's just a plain pocket for you to put your cash, your change, whatever you have. So this will be available on my uh, Etsy listing um, by the weekend. Today is Wednesday, the 21st or 22nd, whatever day it is. The 22nd. And um, I have complete instructions and in how to make these. Um, the lanyard, I just released a video, for, or I'm sorry, the wristlet strip. I just released a video to show you how to make this. There's a written PDF in my Facebook group, Sewing or Starfish Design Embroidery Group. Um, but then you can also watch the video on how to make this. So this is like a great little option to just, if you have to run a few errands, you can put your keys on the wristlet strap or inside the pocket of the wallet here. Um, so this is just my version. I made a whole bunch of these for a craft for a few years ago um, without the pocket. And I still might think like $10 each. So, um, I used a number three zipper. You probably could use a number five zipper if you wanted to. Um, it's fine. This is Tula Pink fabric. This is um, social um, fabric from Backstitch. And I had horrible planning because I put the snap right through Cruella's face. But that's okay. Um, these snaps are from, mag uh, they're magnetic rivet snaps from Cam Snaps. My D-ring strap from... Uh, my punk broidery and these zippers are actually from zipper tape from cam stamp as well so i hope you like it if you do make sure you hit that little subscribe button wherever it is down here down here and um give it a little thumbs up and a like and let's get sewing so these are the parts that we're needing except the zipper and the d-ring my zipper is over there on the other side of the table so i'll show you that to later so we need two five and a quarter by four inch um, lining pieces. And then we need for the back exterior, a five and a quarter by four inch. And I'm using Decova Light for the interfacing on this. I'm out of so Fuse Plus, I would prefer so Fuse Plus. So I've, because I'm using Decova Light and it's heavier, I've cut it a half an inch less wide and less tall um, so that we can keep that out of the seam allowances. Um, and then we need another piece that's the same size, five and a quarter by um, four inches tall for the um, front exterior that's behind the pocket. Then we need a five and a quarter by three and a half inch. That's the lining for the back of the po slip pocket. And I'm using just regular so fuse, a lighter weight woven interfusing for that. Then we need the front of the pocket and we're using Decova light to give it a little bit more body so that'll go there. Then we need two pieces at uh, two inches by three and a half inches for our little flap, our tab. And then we need a three inch by one and a half inch for our D-ring strap connector. And I'm just using, I know there's salvage in this, but I don't want to waste all of the um, fabric. It was already the right width, so I'm just going to use that because you're not gonna see it anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a fast freeze, fast forward, so you can see me do this, the interfacing, cause it's kind of boring, but some of you might wanna see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that section, get all of my pieces here prepared, and then we'll meet back at the sewing table.
Okay, so now we're at the sewing machine here, and we got our pieces all ready to go. And I went ahead, and if you saw me, I hurried up. I have a little bit of Sophie's Plus left over. We're going to put a snap on this tab. And when we do, it's got a lot of weight to it. And if we just only had the interface, oops, I didn't press that very well, so it came loose. That's okay. If we only had the interface um, material, it might not support the snap. So I went ahead and did that. So let's go ahead and get our pieces situated here. So we have our lining. And then we have our back. So we don't need that yet. So we're going to start with our pocket and our flap. And we don't need this yet. So... I've gone ahead and I'm going to use a uh, zipper tape from Cam Stamp um, with a regular pull, but you can use a regular number three zipper is fine. So I have that already. Now um, for our tab, we're going to go ahead and measure in one inch from either side. Uh, actually, yeah, I don't, I'm. Should have looked at my instructions, whatever the instructions say. I think it's half an inch. Half an inch sounds about right. And then we're gonna mark that with a pen. Basically, we're just curving off our edges. And I use just a um, thread spool, and so then just mark, meet those one inch marks or the half inch marks you just made this is just an easy way to do you can actually just leave your your tab straight if you want um, but this is the only piece that would require a pattern so I just really don't want to fuss around with having to do patterns so then just fold it in half and if you want to pin it or clip it to hold it so you know it's nice and firm you can do that but this is such a small piece it's really not necessary and then just cut on that curved line. Oops, I did not cut it off evenly. And now you have a nice little curved rounded edge tab. So then for the second piece, all you have to do is lay this on top of that and you can go ahead and trim around it. So I actually like to put them right sides facing because that's how we're going to sew it together. Even up those edges there. And then I like to put a clip on it to hold it in place while I trim it. And then we're just going to go ahead and trim around that little curve we just made. If you have pinking shears, it'll be really helpful to trim the tab. But if you don't, you can just notch it. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and use a um, 2.5 millimeter stitch length and one quarter inch seam allowance and stitch around our little tab from here around to there. And we want to back to back at either side. This is so small you almost don't need um, the uh, clips on it, but just to show you. So I am using, oops, my Juki Haruka, which is the TL 18 QVP. So I think you can see. And I like to start just a little bit into the fabric and then back tack or back stitch back to it, the beginning. I just find that keeps the, uh, machine from trying to suck the material down. Using a stiletto is very helpful as you're doing this. And on my machine bed here, you might wonder what this here is, all these lines. This is um, washi tape from Seems So Awesome. And it's got all the different measurements on it. Metric, I'm sorry, not metric, Imperial. <laughs> um, as you come around the corner, just if you have to take one stitch at a time to keep that curve, see I'm staying right here on my one quarter inch. I'm getting to the point where I'm, I need to like just rotate it just a tiny bit. Oops. And then just kind of just take one at a time if you have to, so you can get a nice smooth finish. 
on your curve. Now, expert sewers, they can do this with their eyes closed and they don't need to take the time to go one stitch at a time. But I'm not an expert. So I like to take my time. And I can tell already, I think I got it a little bit cockeyed. I might have to take those stitches out. I did. See, I got a little too far over there. I know it's hard to see. Just one moment. Okay, I've got a little bit better lighting, I think, now. Okay, so I just went ahead and back stitched that out. So I'm going to redo that. Um, I got off kilter there. So I'm just going to start here and work my way around. And so it just show, goes to show even more experienced people make mistakes. And I had a feeling I was getting off kilter, but I should have stopped myself. Okay, now this is where I want to start pivoting as I'm coming around the curve here. Yeah, oh, we got one more notch, I think. There we go. That's better. And remember to back stitch at the end. Now, if you need to put, ooh, I still got that a little wonky. That's okay. We're gonna live with that. If you need to, um. Put in your snap you can do that now and i'm going to go ahead and use my pinking scissors and just trim this around so you just trim all the way around that curve and you're reducing the bulk if you don't have pinking scissors, then just cut little notches into the curve. You don't have to trim the side pieces then, but I'm already trimming it, so I might as well. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this right side out carefully, because it's a really tiny tab, but you can get it. It's harder with the, the Sofuse Plus on it. See if I can try and stay in the camera view for you. I don't know why this always is zooming in out. Zooming in, I mean. I'm gonna use um, my magnetic rivet snaps. So those have a, um, a cap on them. I might actually bury it still inside the flap. I think I'm going to, because this is like cute fabric, so I don't want to see the ugly snap in it. Well, the snap's not ugly, but... Yes, this is like watching paint dry, isn't it? But just work it out, and I'm, I'm a little disabled <laughs> because I don't have my, um, my, um, Thumb, my other thumb. I'm going to try and use the hemostats. So these hemostats work really great. You clamp them in there and you just kind of grab a hold of the fabric. So you kind of squeeze and then you lock them into place and then you kind of just pull and it's like having a third hand. And it can hold it while you're trying to like pull this out like this. It's really helpful for... Um, bigger bags. I like the, these are curved at the end. I like the straight ones for turning bags out, especially the bags in the hoop. Okay, this is taking longer than it really should. I apologize. You can fast forward through this section if you want. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. So I got the flap or the tab all ready and we're going to top stitch and I'm actually going to try 3.0 3 
millimeter stitch length. One of my testers thought that did a little bit better, but um, it really depends on what kind of thread you're using. I'm gonna go ahead and get my machine started here at this little scrap because for some reason it was trying to eat it. So I'm using the Tex 45 thread. So that's why I can go a little bit higher on the, uh, it's not wanting to feed in. See, this is what I mean when it doesn't want to feed in, then put it in a little bit farther, start stitching and then back stitch. Now back stitch. Um, don't know what's going on here. There it goes. I'm not sure what that was all about. Hopefully that piece is going to get buried into the seam though. So when you get when you're coming around the corner, remember if you have to go one stitch at a time so that you can pivot this, do that. So I'm sorry, I got distracted. I'm doing Tex 45 thread, which is a little bit thicker. So that's why you can do a little bit longer seam length on your top stitching. But if you're using a regular typical embroidery weight or quilting weight thread, which is usually 40 weight or even 50, then if you do the longer stitch length on your um, top stitching, it's gonna look really loose threads because the thread is so much thinner. And I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning so it doesn't. Not sure what happened at the beginning there but it looks you can't really tell very much anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and put my magnet in now because I already have the piece ready so all I'm gonna do is fold this in half and then up here if you want to put a pin to mark your halfway mark oops because we're gonna need that when we add this to our panel. Or you can mark it with a pen. And then I got my little mark here. And then I want my, my snaps are 14 millimeter. I just got a new supply because I was running low. So I'll show you what this is. So if you have to figure out where you wanna put your hole and then get one of your caps out in your snaps so you know. I like to put the receiving end, which is the piece that has a little, this piece on the pocket itself. And so then I put the Audi piece, so the any and the Audi, I put the Audi piece on the tab. So I'm getting the Audi piece and then I have my any piece. I know there's other ways to refer to them but I'm trying to change my vernacular so it's more gender neutral. All right, and those are our caps. And then I already have um, the die cap for this. So she already had these in a package. So when I bought more, it came as a package deal. These um, caps are a little bit flatter than typical rivet caps. Um, but I think she said she's not going to be able to get any more of them. This is cam stamps, by the way. Okay, so there's our little cap that's going to be on the other end of it. So you want to make sure you have enough room for your um, magnet. So you want to go ahead and guesstimate where you're going to put it now. And I like right around here. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half again. Make sure... Gonna put a tiny little mark right here. So this is where I want it this way. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half again. Make sure everything is in half. And I'm gonna just put it's actually right there at that little yellow mark there. There's my mark. So before I lose it, I go ahead and situated my um, press with this awl and I'm going to go ahead and put it in position and I'm this is my first time using this so I'm a little concerned because I don't know how you can 
I don't know how you see where your the little pointer's coming out. I wonder if you can take that off. This little plastic stuff, is that supposed to come off? Oh, maybe it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm such a dingbat. Yeah, you're supposed to take it off. <laughs> okay, so now I can see. So now I'm going to position this and bring my um, awe down right there. And then I'm going to press it all the way through. I went ahead and invested in this because I was having a hard time with just a regular awe. Wow, this got stuck. It didn't even won't come out of there. Isn't that funny? I had a really hard time with the regular awl um, getting the hole big enough for the stamps. And she says in the instructions that, um, oh, see, this is like stuck now. She said in the instructions that it might not work for really thin fabric. So I wonder if that's what's going on here. Or maybe you're supposed to keep that plastic thing on it. Okay, I can tell I'm going to have to email Judy. <laughs> it's like stuck in here. Can't get that little dye thing out. All right. All right. Well, that's crazy. That didn't help. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, clearly I need a little bit of in better instruction on how to use that thing. And it may be that this was too thin for it because it really chewed it up, but that's okay. So we wanna put our Audi, this is the top, this is the bottom, so our Audi needs to go through here. It did make my hole big enough at least. And then you put the cap on it. I think this is thick enough, but if you are concerned that the, the material isn't going to be thick enough to hold the cap, then this is when you can slide in an extra piece of um, like Decoville light into it, um, into that little tab, and that'll help take up the room. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put my magnet in here. This was not meant to be an instruction video on how to use these, but here we are. So all you do is you position this so the uh, cap is facing the, it actually kind of secures into place, the magnet does, into the die on the bottom, and then just press it. And then it, what you wanna make sure is that there's not a lot of gap right here. All right, cool, all right. Set this guy aside for a few minutes till we're ready for him again. We're gonna wait and we're not gonna add our um, our tab on our pocket until we assemble that because if we do it too soon, um, it might not line up right and we don't want that to happen. So set these over here. Okay. So our tab is ready so we can set that aside. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our uh, D-ring strap connector. We're just gonna go ahead and stitch, top stitch that down both sides at 1 8 inch seam allowance. And when you get to the end, you can actually just go ahead and pivot and cut across it. and then come back down the other side. This fabric is from Backstitch. It's really good quality, but it's on the thin side. So I'm feeling like I should have actually used some Decoville light on this little tab. It's really flimsy, but that's okay. This is not meant to be carrying a lot of weight around. So then put your D-ring strap connector in it and set this guy aside. I like to usually just put a clip on it. All right, now we're ready to do our pocket. So for our pocket, we're gonna take, this material is actually um, neither a right or wrong side, but I have interfacing on it, so you can see that it's the, um, 
wrong side here and this is the right side. So we want right side to right side. If you need to clip it, clip it. I'm gonna stitch from this side because that's where I have my Decoville at. I'm just clipping at the ends. Go back down to 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And then we're just gonna stitch along at the one quarter inch mark. Remember to back stitch at the beginning and end. And the yellow line, which is actually really hard to see, is our one quarter inch seam line. If you positioned your um, Decoville correctly, then that's also can be where you measure for your seam line to end. Just what I tried to do. If you are new to sewing, by all means, get a ruler and a pen and mark your seam allowances on the pieces. So now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and open this up. And you can go to the iron or I'm just going to finger press because it's a small piece. We want to finger press it with this exterior piece down so that this is folding to the back. And just go ahead and finger press it. And then we're gonna fold it to the back. And when we do, we're gonna meet up these corners. So what we're doing is we're creating a faux piping in that seam. It's just a way to give it another cute little accent So I match both those corners and then go ahead and finger press or take this to your iron and press that seam. So I'm going to put a clip on this end just to hold that together while we top stitch. And then I felt my little seam, my interfacing came a little bit loose there. So I want to make sure that that's tight down there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a clip here. And then what you want, it, your goal is to stitch right within this stitch that's created there. But if you can't, then just top stitch it, whatever is more comfortable for you. And I'm gonna go ahead up to three, um, 0.5, and I'm just gonna line my um, presser foot up so that my needle is trying to go down the middle of that seam as much as I can. Because the focus here is on the faux piping or trim, however you want to word it, not the top stitching. So we kind of want the top stitching to hide in that seam. And again, this is called in the quilting world, it's called stitch in the ditch. It's actually hard to do with this foot. <laughs> and I see I didn't get that even down there. This is a little bit more narrow here than it is done in the middle. I see you don't see too much of the top stitching. So make sure you trim your little tails as you go along. All right, so now we're ready to move on to the main bag construction. So set our pocket aside, how cute. She's gonna get covered up with the tab, but that's okay. It'll be a cute surprise when you have her. So we want our Front exterior, I'm using this. So this is what it's gonna be like. This is gonna just be behind your pocket. So we want this piece first, and we're gonna go ahead and fold this and put a little notch in it, or you can use a pen to mark your center mark. Oh, sorry, I just hit the thing. So you can just use a pen. And then we wanna line up our tab. And we want our tab to be right side facing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this on, on both sides, but then I also want to get my little ruler here and make sure that I'm getting this tab on here evenly across the sides. So move my, so let's see, I have, 
one and seven eighths, just under one and seven eighths on that side, and one and seven eighths on that side. Perfect. Take the time to measure that. And now we're just gonna base this in place. So we can leave that 3.5 millimeter stitch length because we're just gonna baste it just to hold it on. And you can back tack. And then use your stiletto. All right. So I'm gonna take a picture of this right quick. Um, so I will be paused, just be right back. Okay. So now we have our zipper and I cut it longer um, just to make it easier. But if you um, have a shorter zipper, just you might have to move the zipper pull out of the way. So I'm just gonna, we don't need to center our zipper because it's longer. So I'm just gonna lay it on top of here and I'm gonna kind of keep the longer edge off to the side so that zipper pull doesn't get in my way. And then I'm just gonna clip it in place and we're gonna baste this on to this new panel that we've created using the same 3.5 millimeter stitch length and an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So just clip that on. There's a couple in the PDF. There's a couple pictures because on the first trial, I forgot to put the um, tab on it. So I had to back take everything out, but I had already done both sides of the zipper. So it was a little confusing. So I'm gonna replace that picture. So it's less confusing. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch this down. And you don't really have to back tack on your basting stitches. So just go ahead and stitch this across. And I'm gonna show you on this one how to do this. Um, and then I'm gonna fast forward through adding the other line and panel on. And that tab gives you a little bit of bulk, so you wanna be careful going across there. Okay, so that's just a base. So now get one of your lining panels. and go ahead and mark the center of that with a pen or you can put a notch in it. Let's see if I can bring you up a little bit, there we go. And then we're gonna mark this lining up and you're gonna have to kind of look at the back. Oh, you can't see it very well. Should have marked on the back, not on the front. That's okay, so mark it on the back too. But you can go ahead and mark the sides because it's a small piece and it should match. So just make sure both sides match. And when we add the other side, we'll make sure we put the, the check mark on both sides. That's the benefit of doing the notch is that um, you don't have to see the pen mark. So go ahead and Oh, one thing, I like to put the lining side on the bed. These clips have a right side and a wrong side. This side is flat, this is curved. So since I'm gonna do the lining side, I actually want my clips to be like this. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna flip this over and sew it from the other direction. So I have my clips like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 2.5 millimeter on the one quarter inch seam line. That wasn't one quarter inch, there we go. And then you wanna back tack here because this is your zipper panel. And then take your clips out as you go along. Make sure you're staying on your end quarter. And this is now your construction seam. So I'm gonna back tack over my flap when I get to it just to make sure that's nice and secure. Oh, that seam allowance went way off kilter. So you have to be careful because that flap is bulky. I'm beginning to think this little seam tape is not helping me at all. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. 
that really. So this is where, if you have a thingamajig, it will help. I should have, um, did I use bobbin thread? No, I thought I'll add so I have this micro lifter on here that I can use, and I should be using that to go over that heavy area, but I didn't. All right, make sure my lining is still lined up. It's still, I missed that seam a little bit. It's not on that quarter inch. It's like getting off kilter from the Decoville. Let me redo this because I want it to be straight. What is going on with this? Oh, it must be, you know, this zipper must be, um, this zipper may be more may not be a full one inch. It's actually bumping up against the zipper teeth. Oh, that's it. It is just slightly shy of one inch. Okay, anyway, that's good enough. So now what we wanna do is press our seam. Only the exterior seam. This is exterior. We only wanna press that open like this and then go ahead and finger press it. And we're gonna top stitch through this section but not your tab so I'm gonna just go ahead so I have my lining over here and we're gonna top stitch through the exterior panel 3.5 millimeter but we're not gonna top stitch through our tab So now we're going to go ahead and lay our lining down and finger press it. Make sure to pull it so it should be meeting your exterior panel. And then when we get ready to close the bag, we're going to go ahead and put um, some double stick tape on it to help hold. Because we didn't top stitch through the lining, we don't want the lining to come up like this. So when we close the bag, we're going to um, pull out the double stick tape. So we're gonna go ahead and put just some 1 8 inch double stick tape. This is optional, you don't have to do that. Um, but I'm just putting it just outside the seam allowance, right underneath the stitches. And then when we go to close it, I'll reach up inside and pull this lining, this release tape. And then our lining will stay snug against that tape. So now that we have the front already we can go ahead and move on and add the back the other lining and i'm not going to do i should be looking at my instructions i can't remember if i'm pretty sure we do we're at that step with the instructions too so and then your your um tab here because we didn't top stitch through it you want to just kind of fold that down and it'll, um, when we could put the magnet in, it'll hold it through. And you probably could top stitch through it if you wanted to, um, but it's a lot of bulk right there. So it might cause you some grief. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and notch this corner, the midpoint, so that I can see it easily when we add the lining. So you just do a little notch there. You see how you see that? And then I'm gonna notch the lining. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just fast forward through this piece and the top stitching. It's gonna be exactly the same thing. We're gonna stitch this to the zipper. We're gonna baste the exterior to the zipper, just like that. Then we're gonna add our lining and do our regular construction seam. And then we're gonna open just exterior and top stitch.
Okay, so now we're ready to add our pocket. Um, so what we're gonna do is clip our um, pocket into place so we can position our magnet. So just, we're gonna um, audition our placement first and we wanna make sure we're not going through the lining and we wanna make sure we have the pocket evenly dispersed, dispersed on both sides. Now mine's a little bit crooked here so I'm going to try and adjust that a little bit um, to make offset for that. So I have three quarters inch on the top of that line. And three quarters inch on the top of that side. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a clip in it for right now just to hold it. And then we'll double check it when we're done. Before we add our um, snap, I like to audition um, and put a little bit of um, something back here. So like your credit cards, a stack of credit cards, whatever you think you're gonna put in your pocket so that you know how much thickness to leave for how much give to give for your snap. So I'm gonna go ahead and do about that much. So I'm like my snap about right like there, I think. So then I'm gonna go ahead and just get the pen. Also make sure it's um, looks even on both sides here. It does. So again, we'll check this. Um, let's see. Make sure it's staying one and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. And then get your pen and just lift up your little magnet your snap and just mark exactly where with your pen, just put the pen there and mark where you're gonna put your little snap. And then if you need to put like a pin through there, like that, just to hold it in place. Okay, now let me get my stuff out of here. So then the other thing you can do is these snaps will take a lot of pressure onto your um, bag. So if you need to, you can put a little square of, a uh, scrap square of Decoville light behind that snap. So let me find my scissors here. And I just use some glue on it. You don't really even need the glue, but um, the snap itself will hold it in place. But you can also, these are also called donuts. So you can like round it off if you want. And it just kind of gives a little bit more depth to that snap. So I've got my position marked where I want that so I can kind of eyeball where I'm going to put this snap and this deco belt inside. So let me get this glue. This glue is such a pain, but it works so great. So. I'm just put a little bit of glue on it. And then I got my pen marked, so I'm going to reach under here in between and put that decoville, just like that. And that's just gonna give a little bit of support to the snap. Okay, let's put that in there. And now we're gonna go ahead and get our device. I'm not gonna use that all thing again because it wasn't, it was a little bit of a disaster. So I'm gonna use this and um, let me try using the seam ripper. Maybe that'll work better, actually. I'm going to try and go through all layers. Now, if you want, you can just do your um, snap through this layer. So I'll show you that. And then we can just go through the decoville. So just pull up your lining, your back part away, and then go ahead and put your seam ripper through. I don't know if that's any better or not. And now this time you need your snap to be on the other side. So your little um, cap is going to go underneath. I'm just trying to stretch this out a little bit. So this is going to go through here. If I can get it in. 
It's so hard, guys. I need um, a better. Sometimes I use, put these in here and stretch the hole out with this. I got to figure out how to use that all thing. That's what I bought it for. Okay, that's better. Poor Corella. I didn't plan this very well. She got a snap through her face. There we go, finally, wow. I'll put the cap on it. All right, and then we gotta use the other piece of the rivet set for the any. And you see how it also has a little nib in there that the any will sit right into. So just go ahead and turn this upside down and it's a little awkward. I'm trying to keep my clips under because I don't want to lose my position. Um, set, you hear that how it clicked into place? And then just press the rivet press. In this case, I'm using the screwdriver or the pliers. And then again, make sure that there's not a lot of room in between there. Perfect. Now that's hidden, and so you won't see the on the, on the other side of your pocket. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and snap this back down and I'm gonna double check all my measurements again and make sure while I was messing with that, that I didn't mess this up. So, and I think I did, this should be three quarters, so this should actually come up a little bit. Let me measure over on this side. So in between three quarters and seven eighths. So this actually needs to come up. Somehow I did mess it up a little bit. Okay. Take the time to do this so that it just it looks much more and much much better in the end. Perfect. Okay. Clip this into place before I mess it up again. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and base this all around and we're gonna actually add our tab on as well. So, um, you see there's not a lot of room here for the tab. Probably would be a better idea to do a half inch tab. So when you go to close the bag, it doesn't have as much room. So what you wanna do is probably overlap onto this side here, just so it's underneath where your zipper's at. Do you see that? The alternative way you can do it is actually put it in the middle and then you can actually even like hang this like a lanyard. So I'm actually gonna do that. So I'm gonna measure and then put it in the middle. I think this should be about four inches. So if I go right here, that two inches. And then I wanna make sure I leave enough overhang um, so that my presser foot can get past here for the final seam. And then we're not gonna trim off, I made this a little bit long, but we're not gonna trim off that whole um, extra because we want to um, have a little bit extra for support. Okay, so that's clipped there. All right, again, make sure your lining is out of the way. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna base this down all around and hold it into place. To the sewing machine here. I'm gonna, I can kind of had that plug and the phone plugged in and it was kind of pulling on the phone a little. Okay, so we're gonna just baste all the way around. Did I somehow turn my phone? There it is. At one eighth inch seam allowance and just a basting stitch. So again, I'm just riding along the edge of the seam, the foot I'm using because it's actually um, 
one eighth inch. This is my favorite. I use it almost exclusively. I think I've mentioned it. I got a little bit off kilter there. Come back on. Okay, now I'm gonna get close to this little here and it's going crooked, so I wanna make sure I help hold it into place. I'm gonna take one step, make sure it's still straight. All right, there we go. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our bag all ready. So I've already opened up my zipper, you see that. We're gonna match lining and to lining and exterior to exterior. So this was another um, area of confusion for my, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just clip this extra zipper tape now to get out of our way. So the um, other thing is you can trim, burn off the edges to make sure that it doesn't fray on you. So let me trim that off. And then you just take the lighter real quick over like this. And it just, just make sure that those edges don't fray. Okay. Now we want to make sure that we match um, these pieces up on either side here. So what you want to do is... Um, Match the lining up and you see how you have your two pieces here. You want those right on top of each other. So match that up and then put a pin in it. Or you can use clips. So I like to match up my sides first. And then on this side, we're going to do the same thing. So fold it. The, the folded zipper should go towards the lining. So we're gonna fold it and we wanna make sure that those two pieces of exterior are right on top of each other. And then go ahead and pin or clip it. So it's right on top of each other. And then go ahead and finish um, matching your exteriors all the way around. And since I have this Decoville on here, mine are kind of thick, so I'm gonna use clips. So I'm matching up the corners first and then I'll add clips where I need to. And I don't need quite this much overhang, so I'm gonna trim just a little bit of that off. You need about a half an inch. Okay. And then just kinda, of, if you have any areas where it's a little bit wavy, just kinda of coax it together. All right, then we're gonna match up our lining. And I sewed this way, so I like to go ahead and put the pins so they're facing, I'm gonna come around that way, so I'm gonna have the pins this way so I can pull them out easily. And we're gonna make sure that we leave an opening in the bottom of the bag for, oops, look what I did there. Don't do that, I got my lining caught up in it. So that would have been a really bad thing if I sewed it like that. So it's a good thing that I caught that when I did. So I'm gonna make sure I'm matching myself back up over here. Get my lining out of the way. There we go. And then I'm gonna put two pins perpendicular to the lining. So I'll remember to leave my opening to turn the bag. So what I do is right down here, I put two pins like this. You need about three inches, two and a half inches, three inches. And then I'll remember to um, not stitch there so that I can turn the bag. So when we start, we're gonna do um, a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, for this small bag, we can do a quarter inch. There's not a lot of balk. As we get into the lining though, we're gonna ease that into closer to three eighths of an inch. That's just a trick that I've learned from other sewists to um, make sure that you have 
um, don't have a baggy lining. So I'm gonna get my stiletto to help me out here. And where's my one quarter inch? I'm gonna start over here and try and stay as close as I can to that seam allowance, a 2.5 seam, seam stitch length. Then we're gonna back stitch over. Pull that pin out. Now I'm gonna try and stay as close to that quarter inch as I can. When you get to the corner, take a back tack, and that just helps um, make sure that you're actually getting in that seam at the corner. It's just a little trick, because sometimes the seam doesn't complete if you pivot too soon. You have to make sure the needle is on its way coming back up, not down. And you see, since I put the decoville one quarter inch out of my seam length, I'm able to actually just go right alongside the decoville. That's one of the benefits of doing that. Then if you um, take the time to draw your seam allowance in, when you place your decoville, you'll um, be able to make sure it's lined up correctly. All right. And then when we come back over here, we're going to back tack over our... Um, D-ring strap connector. This is like kind of like pulling because of that flap in there. So I'm just gonna kind of coax, coax it so it's not um, uneven. And I'm just looking at my exterior panel because I can see my slip pocket underneath is just somehow a little bit wider. Okay, so I'm gonna back tack over that. Back tack over that and I'm gonna back tack over the pocket. Okay, now I wanna make sure that my lining is staying down here. It doesn't flip up on us. We're gonna come back around here. All right, now as we ease into our lining, once we get past the beginning part here, we're gonna go ahead and ease into that a little bit thicker steam, seam allowance. And for me, I just kinda of get close to the 3 8 inch on this size bag. When I do the um, 3 8 inch seam, then I take the lining closer to between the 3 8 and the one half inch. But for this, I'm just bringing it close to the 3 8 inch. I think that's about, oh, one more stitch. All right, and then remember, I'm gonna back stitch when I get to this pin here. And I'm going to cut off and come back over here, close to the 3 8 inch. And I'm going to back stitch. And then when I get closer to up here, I'll move back into my regular quarter inch seam line. All right, there we go. So now we're ready to trim the corners and remember don't trim off this. Don't cut into your um, stitches, but I like to actually grade the corners like this.
All right, now we're ready to turn this and let's hope that I did a good job on the seams. I'm a little anticipating here. And if you need to reach in there and get the zipper opened all the rest of the way, it's a little bit easier then to open it. Some zippers have that locking mechanism though and it won't let you do it from the wrong side. I think this might be one of them because it's not opening all the rest of the way. So we might have to just deal with it. He's like, no, I'm not moving. You're out of here. Out of luck. Okay. So again, this is where these um, hemostats come in handy. So if you want, you can go ahead and open them up and then reach inside the turning hole and then just kind of pinch uh, the fabric into it. You need to grab a hold of the fabric and then lock it into place and then you pull it. And I'm not getting a good hold because of the decoville. So. Oh, hold on a minute. This is starting to come undone. That's not good. I don't want that to come undone. This is score tape. Uh, there's a lot of um, vendors, um, custom groups doing uh, fusible tape and fusible interfacing right now. I, I accidentally ordered way too much score tape. So it's going to be a long time before I can... Uh, try any of those tapes and you know justify buying it to try it so for right now I'm sticking with my score it works really well I like it so and it's very affordable you get like three or four big rolls for I don't know maybe twelve dollars there's a I'll have a link underneath the in the description to my Amazon list okay so I'm just kind of working this out I want to not be too aggressive because Decoville Light is best if you can let it cure for a long time before you start sewing, turning on it. And I didn't have that long of a length. Oh, and I can see I'm already off there. That's okay. Bummer. But just goes to show I'm not perfect. And I've made a lot of these. Oh, I've made a lot of these. When I did the craft fair a few years ago, oh my gosh, I made so many of these bags. I just never got around to making a pattern for it. And I think there's some other people who have patterns just like this out there. But again, you can only do things so many times. This is just my way of doing it. Okay, I'm having trouble because um, that zipper won't open all the way. So I'm having trouble getting that all the way out. So I'm pushing this lining back in there so I can flip this piece around. All right. And I am definitely going to have to press this again, but thankfully it's all cotton, so it's fine. There we go. Well, it's really stuck in there. There we go. Usually if you get one corner all the way through, the rest comes through easily. But in this case, it did not work that way. So while your lining is open is when you want to get inside and push all those corners out. And this is another trick that I, I learned. Oh my goodness, I don't remember who I learned it from now. It might have been from Nicole from Sewing Nar. Um, But it's a way to butterfly the seam inside so you get a little bit nicer finish on the corners. I'll show you in just a few minutes here what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and push this in to help push my corners out. Not yet, apparently. The decoville makes it so much firmer. I feel like you get just as nice of a finish with the Sofuse Plus as you do with the decoville. But the Sofuse Plus turns nicer and it doesn't wrinkle as bad as the Decoville. Okay, so there I got it. Finally got in there. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just push the corner up. Oh, no. I, I must have snipped it. Ah, 
It's a good thing we haven't turned the bag right side out yet, so I can go back in there and fix that. I thought maybe I did snip too close to that. Okay, I'm going to try and get the zipper to open all the way up first, though, so that I don't have this problem when I redo it. Okay, so here we go again. I'll be going to turn this right side out and fix it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I fixed that, so I can turn this back right side out again. Be careful not to snip your corners too tight. Okay. So, let's get that all twisted around. Be cognizant that you have that tape in there. So you don't accidentally rub that off. Alright. Go ahead and pull the bag all the way out, and hopefully this time you don't have a big hole in your corner. I should have lifted that the first time I thought when I snapped it that the yellow thread was right there in that spot, so it was kind of hard to see. It's like, did I cut that too close? Always trust your instincts. My instincts were I cut it too close, and I should have checked it again. This is such cute fabric. This is called Social, and there might actually still be some available by the time you see this video. Um, Backstitch had retail today, and I, oh, no, it's vinyl. Vinyl. I don't think there's any more fabric. But um, it's so cute. I couldn't resist getting some. All right, there we go. So our corners are all out now with no holes. Okay, so what I was getting ready to say before I rudely interrupted myself with a torn corner is I learned this technique. So when you want to get your um, your corners to be nice and lined out on the outside, these pieces, which mine is crooked. I did get it crooked, but that's okay. What you do is if you go inside, um, and push that corner out through your lining so you can see it. Butterfly it open. Butterfly means just pull this open, the seam apart inside the bag. So I'm having a hard time getting a handle of it. Okay, so you pull the seam apart. And I'm having trouble because my thumbnail is still gone, so I haven't doing it. But you pull it apart. And then hold it with your thumb, pulled apart like that as you push it out. So actually, I think you want to keep your finger in here. So push it apart with your finger. See how that seam open? And then push it out. And then that way the seam is butterflied open inside and it'll pop out your side corners nicer. So two things that we did to make these corners nicer is we didn't sew through the lining and then we butterfly that little corner out so let's try on this side again so pull this out okay and there's our seam so open up that seam there and put your finger in there and hold that seam open as you so then out here and then i can push it down and then my seam is nice and even right here even though mine's crooked. Okay, now reach up inside and pull your little release tape from your, the tape that we put in there. So just go ahead and pull it out. And then we're gonna carefully place our lining down. I like to start here in the center and push it down into that tape and that tape is gonna just help hold this lining down so it doesn't come up and get into the zipper since we didn't top stitch through it. And then just finger crease it down. We already finger creased it before we, after we sewed it. So we're just creasing it again into that. So it's gonna go into that tape that we put in there. And then do the same thing on the other side. So another recent tip I learned, I don't remember who, I learned this from, 
but so it's trying to not want to come off. What I do, I have done this on my in the hoop bags because the nature of in the hoop, it's hard to um, get the lining. Um, so on my, on the back of my, I'm trying to think and work at the same time. So when I do my in the hoop bags, I, I don't top stitch through the back most of the time because the nature of the in the hoop bag is that it's hard to, um, this one's not wanting to come off. It's hard to um, get the D-rings to lay down flat when you top stitch through the back because just the nature of how we do it. Um, so I will put tape up to help hold that lining down since we're not top stitching through it. Oh, this is not wanting to come loose at all. Oh, I think I finally got it. Wow. I don't know how I did that. Okay. Let's see if I can get that back into position. All right, there we go. Okay, so then just go ahead and fold this down into the tape. And repress it. And then over here, you will get that little balk there. So just kind of work that into the seam allowance. I usually just kind of push it like this, and it usually will lay down if you do that. So you're just pushing that into the seam allowance like that. Okay, I'm gonna tuck this out and make sure everything looks good before I close it. Definitely needs pressed again. All right, there we go. I'm happy with that, so then pull the lining out. And it always wants to um, just kind of automatically make its own seam. Oh, I didn't push the corners of the lining up. When you do that, it kind of wants to fold itself down into its own seam. So I'll show you in a minute. So push those corners out too. Don't forget those. I have a lot of fray material here. This fabric frays really badly. So when you do this, if you put your fingers in on either side and go like that, it automatically kind of wants to bring that seam allowance the 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 fold down into the seam allowance just a little trick and then just pin it then we're going to go ahead and fold the stitch this at 1 8 inch seam allowance 2.5 millimeter stitch length it takes longer to show how to do these bags than it does to actually to do it so if you assembly line, this is what I did a few years ago for a craft fair. I assembly line and I made like 15 of these and like, mm, I think it was not counting the cutting time. It took me about two hours. Cutting takes longer, cutting and interfacing. Um, but I made them all lanyard style like this and um, people really liked them. I think I sold them for ten dollars, but it was a kids' craft fair. So, what did I do there? I got a little souvenir. It's okay. I'm gonna leave him and tuck it back in. And there we go. So now it's all safe and snug. Let's zip him up. I still don't like this corner. I'm gonna try and push him out just a little bit more. How did I manage to dent this corner, you guys? It's me. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now he's all done. And then it's, you can use it as a wristlet or you can hang it on a lanyard. I'm gonna go ahead and press it and she'll be much prettier.
shows the thread I missed. So there we go, guys. I hope you like it. Um, if you, um, sorry, if you consider, um, or if you like my content, please consider subscribing. I'm not good at this part. You're supposed to do all this fancy stuff. You know, I need to write a script. Please consider subscribing, uh, like the video, put the, turn, click the bell to get notified of new videos. Um, when I release them, which is usually when I'm releasing a new pattern, um, this should be released today is the 20, First, I think so this should be out in a few more days. I just have a few more typos to do to the PDF and it'll be all ready to go. Thanks.